Next qualitative property will go for the depression in freezing point. Depression in freezing point of the solution. So here also there is a depression in the freezing point by the addition of the non-volatile solute. Non-volatile solute. Here also there is a difference between the freezing point of the solution and the freezing point of the pure solvent. So the freezing point of the pure solvent minus the freezing point of the solution is generally called as the depression in freezing point. We show this with the delta Tf. Delta Tf. Suppose if I take here this is uh, T0 freezing point no? T naught F which is the freezing point of pure solvent pure solvent and uh, this as uh, the solution freezing point of solution where having the non volatile solute now as per definition delta tf is given by this t naught f minus tsf so here there is a depression or decrease in the freezing point so which is higher actually the freezing point of the solvent is higher than that of the freezing point of the solution but in the case of boiling point boiling point of the solvent is uh, solution is higher than that of the boiling point of the pure solvent so this is and here also this is proportional to p naught minus ps this is proportional to again number of moles of the solute and experimentally it is observed that delta tf is also proportional to molality of the solution that's why this delta tf we can write it as proportional to molality of the solution from this delta tf is given by proportionality constant kf into molality here kf is called as molal depression constant molal depression constant so here also in order to define this take the molality of the solution as unity r1 so from this we can write delta tf is, e is equal to kf so these are the two things that we have to remember and as well we know the formula for the molality okay so when m is equal to 1 we can define now kf kf is the molal depression constant which is nothing but the depression the freezing point of the solution when molality of the solution is 1 or simply 1 molal solution 1 molal solution and here also if we draw the graph between again vapor pressure versus temperature so here we'll get the graph like this for solvent especially solvent which is in liquid state and uh, here this is the solvent in solid state okay and uh, this is the graph for the solution so this is for the pure solvent this is for the solution but here from this point to this point the solvent is in liquid state liquid solvent here solvent is in solid state solid state some from means the opposite x has a point a this has point b this has point c so a b c represents this is a graph between vapor pressure to the temperature so where this a b c will represent purely for the solvent so from point a to b we can observe only solid form of the solvent from point b to point c that is liquid form of the solvent okay and this is for the solution solution okay now this particular suppose this is a particular point where you we are taking as you know so this will give 
represent this is for the solution that's why we can take tf of s nothing but freezing point of the solution and this particular point will represent tf not freezing point of the pure solvent pure solvent so this from here to here this is nothing but delta tf delta tf okay and here the expression for kf i usually which is given by r into t naught square divided by 1000 into lf where as usually r is the gas constant here t naught is the freezing point of the pure solvent and uh, lf is the latent heat of fusion latent heat of fusion so which is given by again delta hf into molar mass of the solvent 1000 into delta hf this delta hf is enthalpy of fusion and this m1 is the molar mass of the solvent molar mass of the solvent this is the second uh, colligative property which is the sorry third colligate property which is the depression in freezing point yeah we'll go for the next colligate property that is osmotic pressure before that we have to understand what is a process of osmosis osmosis here in order to understand the process of osmosis let us take a container or a beaker place one semi permeable membrane like parchment paper or animal bladder whatever it may be this membrane generally allows only solvent particles to pass through it but not the other particles like solute particles so here assume we have separated this into two compartment by using the semi permeable membrane okay and assume this is the compartment a this is the compartment b in the compartment a we have a solution solution in the compartment b we have solvent this is the solvent so this is the solution this is the solvent so these two are separated by a semi permeable membrane it is observed that the solvent molecules will pass through this semi permeable membrane into the solution so this inflow of the solvent from solution side uh, sorry from solvent side into the solution through the semi permeable membrane it is generally called as process of osmosis osmosis so it is the inflow of the solvent molecules from solvent region into the solution region through the semi permeable membrane it is generally called as process of osmosis process of osmosis so here what happens is whenever the solvent will move from this side to this side automatically the level of the solvent gradually decreases at the same time the level of the solution gradually increases that's why here assume we have a piston this side so assume which is a frictionless piston which is arranged here along this solution side okay so what i am saying is because of the inflow of the solvent from solvent region into the solution region gradually this will rise this gradually will decrease the levels so in order to avoid this what we are doing is we are applying this certain force by using the piston so whenever we use the piston or force here so we can prevent this inflow of the solvent from solvent region into the solution region 
okay so the force that is acting per unit area nothing but pressure that must be applied on the solution side in order to prevent the process of osmosis is generally called as osmotic pressure osmotic pressure so here generally there occurs the inflow of the solvent from solvent region into the solution region so in order to prevent this process of osmosis we have to apply certain pressure on the surface of the solution in order to prevent the process of osmosis is generally called as osmotic pressure osmotic pressure so this is exactly what is osmosis and what is osmotic pressure here we have taken one is solvent other as the solution not only this we can take both our solutions only but among these two solution one will be dilute solution other will be the concentrated solution so I assume this right hand side we have the dilute solution left hand side we have the concentrated solution in such a case also we can observe the process of osmosis here also what happens is the solvent molecules will move from dilute solution into the concentrated solution is also actually the process of osmosis here also we can apply certain external pressure in order to prevent the process of osmosis is generally called as the osmotic pressure and this is generally studied by van't hoff van't hoff so according to van't hoff here the osmotic pressure this is proportional to molar concentration of the solution or the dilute solution here we know the c is the molar concentration which is nothing but number of moles by volume in liters suppose if we take this number of moles as one then we can write that means if n is equal to one c becomes equal to one by v in such a case we can write this pi proportional to one by v this looks like boyle's law according to boyle's law in the states of matter the pressure is inversely proportional to the volume at constant temperature so here also the temperature is constant temperature constant pi is proportional to 1 by v so osmotic pressure is inversely proportional to volume of the solution that's why we can call this as boyle's van t hoff law Boyle's van t Hoff law you make this as equation one and also here this osmotic pressure is directly proportional to temperature this we call it as van t Hoff Charles law van t Hoff Charles law so from this so we can write here pi is proportional to c into t or pi is equal to some constant here we can take this as r c into t here c is molar concentration in the first case we have taken here n is equal to 1 but in general if the value of n is not equal to 1 mole in such a case we can use here molar concentration as c which is nothing but pi is equal to r into c into t or c into r into t so initially the instead of or they have used yes capital s where which is called as the solution constant solution constant and it's observed that dilute solutions also behaves like the gases that's why the all gas laws here also apply to the dilute solutions which are given, which are explained by van t hoff van t hoff so here also we can write this particular expression like c is nothing but number of moles by volume into r into t which is nothing but pi into v is nothing but equal to n into r into t this is like looks like pv is equal to nrt ideal gas equation ideal gas equation so pi into v is equal to n into r into t where pi is the osmotic pressure v is the volume of the solution n is the number of moles r is the gas constant and t is the absolute temperature pi is into v is equal to n into r into t 
and apart from this so generally suppose we take two different solutions suppose for first solution you take the osmotic pressure as pi 1 for the second solution you take the osmotic pressure as pi 2 suppose if these two solutions which are having the osmotic pressures are equal they are generally called as the isotonic solution isotonic solution so what are isotonic solutions those solutions for which the osmotic pressures are equal are called as isotonic solution and we we'll compare suppose two different solutions having different osmotic pressures and the solution which is having higher osmotic pressure is generally called as a hypertonic solution hypertonic solution and for example here if pi 1 is greater than pi 2 just assume so osmotic pressure of the solution 1 is greater than that of the osmotic pressure of the solution 2 so here this we can say the first solution is hypertonic solution hypertonic than that of the second solution and here we are saying solution 2 is having lower value of the osmotic pressure in such a case the solution with lower value of the osmotic pressure is generally called as hypotonic solution hypotonic solution so here first solution in this case is called as hypertonic solution second one is called as hypotonic solution hypotonic solution this is the another quantity which is osmotic pressure if you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on cbsc syllabus